Hello and welcome to this ICON Data API tutorial. My name is Eve. I'm founder and managing partner of the Python Quants. Today's tutorial is about derivatives analytics, and in particular, we want to build the basis for derivatives analytics by working with data for complete chains of objects. The agenda is as follows. We first retrieve options data for single maturity. Then we retrieve options data for multiple maturities at once. We select subsets of the options data and we work a little bit uh, with the subsets. For example, we do some visualization of the subsets uh, with regard to pricing data as well as implied volatilities. Let me jump to the Jupyter Notebook. As usual, we have quite a few imports here. Uh, in particular, we need to import the icon Python wrapper. In the background, the proxy or the icon application needs to be running in order for the icon data API to work. Here, a quick look at the versions used here for this tutorial, and we can proceed by connecting to the icon data API, providing the credentials for the account. So, first we retrieve data for single majority, there are the so-called chain rigs. And we will work basically with options for the German DAX 30 blue chip index. And in this regard, we are going to retrieve data with regard to the type, strike price, here the closing value, also the implied volatility. So we use data fields here and we combine the data fields with the chain rigs that we apply in order to retrieve the data. So fields define first, and the function that I'm going to use is get data. And you see I'm picking here the third of the examples, which gives us a list of all options for the June 2018 majority on the DAX. And we also, of course, have specified already the fields that we're interested in. When we have a look at the hat, the first five rows of the data frame object, we see that we get the underlying instrument here as well. So .g dax i, which is a rig for the German DAX 30 index. And we can from there read, for example, the closing price. Next, we pick out the close price, and this is now stored in g dax i which we can later use for example, when we want to work uh, with pricing models or whatever the task is in the derivatives analytics area. We divide now the data set into puts and calls. So we pick out all those rows which relate to puts and all those rows which relate to calls and store the resulting uh, values and data rows in separate data frame objects. So here we have 124 for the puts and 124 accordingly for the calls. Now I'm going to restrict the options data to those that are not too far in or out of the money. So we have kind of a criterion with regard to the moneyness of the options. I put here a limit for the absolute uh, derivation of the height of 2000 and I'm implementing here the selection accordingly based on the absolute difference between the strike price and the current index value and the defined limit. Now we end up with just 80 out of the 124 in both cases. We can now move on and visualize the data easily. To this end, we use cufflinks. And I said first here, as you can see, the strike price as the index, which gives us the x ticks in the plot. You see on the left hand side in the subplot, we get the pricing information. On the right hand side, we nicely see the volatility smile with regard to the options that we have selected before. The same now for the calls. This is for the puts, this is for the calls, and we see the range of the strikes that we have selected previously. Again, we discover here the volatility smile. Now let us retrieve data for multiple majorities at once. So to this end, I add one field to the list of fields that I have before. In particular, it is the expiration date that I'm going to use here on top. 
and I use the respective chain rig here for the DAX options. This now retrieves more data. And having a look at the head, this looks similar, but we now have also different maturities um, in addition to the uh, previous data set that we have retrieved. Again, I want to separate puts and calls, same procedure as before. And I also restrict the data as before to uh, moneyness criterion here. So that we finally end up with still 568 uh, ones for the puts and the same number for the calls. So many more, but this is now due to multiple majority dates. Speaking of multiple majority dates, we have those majority dates now in data, for example, May, June, July, September and December 2018, and it goes out until December 2022 in this regard. In what follows for the visualization, I'm just picking out a subset here, namely three majorities only, May, September 18, and also here, as you can see, the June majority 2019. So if you're interested, for example, what options you have for plot, I can always recommend that you use, for example, here, the question mark, or you can use help. So uh, when you wonder what all these different uh, parameters are about, just execute here the uh, line as displayed. Just put a question mark behind the iPlot method. I will skip this for now. And here I'm going to iterate over the three expiry dates that I have selected before. And I'm going to plot now three different plots via this little loop. And as you can see, we have per majority, per expiry date, we now have the, um, here in this case, for the puts, the prices, as well as the implied volatilities in the same plot, but now on two different y-axes, because the scaling is so different. Here we see the second relevant majority and the third one, and like usual, the cufflinks plots here, they're kind of nice because uh, I can zoom in and I can focus on what I'm most interested in. The same now for the calls, also three plots for the three majorities. Here we see that the relationship and the implied volatility doesn't seem to be that smooth. Uh, so we can uh, uh, discover, I wouldn't say irregularities, um, maybe no arbitrage, but still it's not as smooth as on the left. And here with regard to the data, the first majority, the second majority, uh, which is September 1, and the last one, which is June 2019. This is going uh, now much more flatter here in the sense of that the volatility smile is not that pronounced, it's rather a smirk here. Now let us mix up the data a little bit into single plots, which means so far we have had kind of the majority itself, which separated the data sets into subsets. Now let us do it a little bit differently in that we compare prices and implied volatilities over different majorities. To this end, here this little code plot um, comes up with new data frames where we put in the one data frame is the closing prices and in the other one um, the implied volatility. So we separate the market quotes from the implied volatility so that we can now come up for the puts here first with a plot which now shows the, um, the uh, um, pricing information over three majorities in a single plot. The same holds true for the implied volatilities. We can now see where we now have an easier time to spot differences in the implied volatility curves here that we have plotted over three different majority. The same approach now implemented here for the calls so that we have the first plot here with the pricing information for the closing prices, the market quotes as retrieved from the Icon Data API. And in the second instance here, we can also compare the implied volatilities over the different strikes for the three different maturities, you know, seeing directly that the shorter the majority, the more pronounced the volatility smile is work 
is in this case here for the options on the German DAX index. This brings me already to the end to this tutorial. We have covered retrieving of options data with regard to single maturity, also multiple maturities. We selected subsets and we visualized the data. This is meant to be as a basic introduction to options chains data, which would then build the basis for further derivatives analytics tasks, or where we can do, for example, a model calibration or simulation of such calibrated models and so forth. But this is meant to be as a start. As usual, you find the Icon Data API developer resources here towards the end. In particular, I want to point you to the article on chains, which uh, gives you an overview of how to work with, for example, such option chains, rigs um, that we have used here. Getting briefly back to the agenda where we have covered these four points. And this brings me to the end of this tutorial. For me, it remains to say happy Python coding and happy financial data science with the Icon Data API and see you in the next tutorial.